All right. Hey guys, what's up? This is the officially unofficial geek channel weekly comic review. Spoiler tastic. Fun as always. Here I am Sunday morning when I record this time of recording Sunday morning, May 21st. All right. So, um, let's go ahead and talk about the comics that I read this week. Um, if you are new, please like subscribe, hit that notification bell. So, you know, every time that I post, let me adjust this a little bit and share with your friends. If you like my video, if you like my content, share with your friends, let them know what they are missing on the officially unofficial geek channel. Without further ado, let's go ahead and, uh, let's talk about the comics that I read this week. Um, no particular order except for the final three. Um, the final three are my favorites for this week. And, um, yeah, so let's, let's dig in. Um, first of all, um, there was a Donna DC primer, um, free comic this week. Um, typically with these things, they end up being kind of a rehashing of letting you know the story thus far. But however, there is a story in here, um, that encompasses a, a good portion of this, this floppy here. Um, talking about good old Amanda Waller. If you have not noticed, we are kind of, if you've been reading kind of across the DC platform, they've been kind of hinting at, uh, the return of Amanda Waller, um, downright not hinting actually downright, you know, she's, she's coming. She's going to be back in a big way. There's going to be things that she does that, um, affect the way they're setting it up, the way they're setting it up prediction. She's doing things and making moves, um, with the help of peacemaker, um, which are putting her in a position where she's going to have a lot more impact, um, throughout the dawn of DC situation. So watch out for that. I'm already seeing possible impact from things that she's doing in that story in another one of the books that I read this week. Um, I'm just going to be real with you here because this is a spoiler-tastic review. Um, Waller has taken the Suicide Squad uh, Task Force X model and uh, kind of tweaked it, kind of uh, expanded, kind of um, changed focus and mission statement and, um, you know, uh, uh, methods of... Uh, means and what have you, it, it's still kind of a little bit of a mystery exactly what's going on with Amanda Waller and who she's directly working for. Um, all that jazz. So when it comes to Amanda Waller, uh, she has, uh, found all of the, um, remaining villains that cited uh, a good deal of the remaining villains that sided with, uh, Deathstroke. And let me tell you, these are, these are kind of like, these are kind of like C-list, D-list villains here. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. We're going to get to see some, you know, some characters that maybe, especially if you look at that and you look at the group, you're going to see some characters that maybe you haven't seen very much of in the past few years. Um, and she is, uh, visiting them in a cave where they're hiding, I guess. Um, and she's like, okay, so here's the deal. Um, no questions asked, um, full pardons for all of you. Um, if you are able, full pardons to you, if you kill a superhero. 
Yep. So that is that is Amanda Waller and what she is doing right now. Now we will talk about it. Um, and and of course she is doing it in um absolutely um um what's the word I'm looking for? She is doing it in an absolutely um brutal style um of Amanda Waller that we we are aware of, okay? Y'all, we know Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller is bad news. So, but she is going to be involved. If you have not picked that up, it's free, guys. Just, it'll take you five minutes to read the whole damn thing. Um, and then the rest of it is just kind of catching you up to this point. Because we have had some of the DC, um, Dawn of DC things come out already. It's catching you up to this point. Um, not everything is mentioned in there, but a good portion of stuff is mentioned in there. Um, so it's free. Pick it up. You might have seen it on the comic book shelves and uh, maybe you didn't know about it. I had heard things about it, but I wasn't, you know, necessarily going to grab it. Um, and my boyfriend's like, look, this is free. And I was like, you know what? You son of a bitch, I'm in because it's free and I like free shit. Let that be known across all of the universe. I like free shit. So I got it. I read it and I actually ended up benefiting from it. My reading benefited from it. So woo. Anyways. Um, next book we're going to talk about is one that I actually just, I, I gave it a shot y'all and I'm reading it's Superboy Amanda tomorrow. And as you know, this is the round Robin contest winner. And I'm not, you know, I, I just, I gave the first issue a try, gave this issue a try. And honestly, I don't know if it's, I'm just not into, uh, this character or if I'm just not into the storyline. I, this is a DNF did not finish, did not finish Superboy Amanda tomorrow. I, it, it's not to say that other people might not, you know, it's not to say that other people would get something out of this, especially if they really like the character of Superboy. Um, I really in the past have had no problems with them. The thing is, it's like, to me, that it's like, um, in the first issue, uh, there's an editor's note that says that all this takes place before, the new set of action comics after Dark Crisis, the Dawn of DC, you already know. Connor is back, my friend. Uh, you know, like this this character, there's no stakes because you know that this was, this is all takes place prior to, to that um, if you're paying attention to the editor's notes in that first issue. So, um, and, this is this is Superboy's eat, pray, love, um, journey, and I'm just nah, nah, I'm dropping. Um, sorry. If you like it, that's great. Um, but I I am not here for Superboy's eat, pray, love journey. Um, yeah. If that may sound harsh, it's harsh. Oh well. Okay, friends. So, um, next up, I'm going to talk about a book that, um, my shop got shorted on and I did not get to read when it first came out. Um, so, um, finally they came to me and they're like, this is not the cover you wanted. Um, I don't think this is the cover you wanted. Um, do you want to just go ahead and take it anyways? And I said, yes. And this is where Monsters Lie, number four. I have to tell you guys, I've really enjoyed this book. I've really enjoyed um, this book by Kyle Starks, um, Pietro Kowalski, Vladimir Popov, and Joshua Reed. Uh, I apologize if I say any names incorrectly throughout the course of this video. Um, yeah. But anyways, um, that cover, it looks like it was drawn by David Rubin. That's That's lovely. I do like this one. Um, the absurdity 
and campiness of this particular series, and this was the last issue, issue four, um, has been bringing me in month after month with uh, the absurdity and and cheesiness of this uh, story. Now, if you are not familiar with Where Monsters Lie, Mon- Where Monsters Lie is a story of a cul-de-sac neighborhood um, that houses all slasher serial killers and um, of varying respects. And um, one of them called Puzzleman accidentally brings his work home with him. Doesn't accidentally, he's just dumb. He brings his work home from with him and one of the kids escapes. And the kid goes to the police and there's at this particular police station is this officer that has a history with one of these serial killers, one of these slashers. And, um, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm going to, I'm going to help you kid. Um, and it, what, what, uh, ensues is at least, uh, uh, like, like three issues of, um, the fight. And it's really funny. Cause like you get to the, to, you know, like it's progressing, like a full stop, like just going for it at that end of that first issue. And you're just like, are th- this is supposed to be four issues. How is this going to work out? Are they, they going to string this along for three more issues? And the answer to that question guys is that yes, yes, they did. They strung that whole fight along totally for four issues total. Three more issues after that first initial interaction issue. And then they strung it along for another three issues. Now, when I say the terms strung it along, that implies something negative. However, I am not talking about this in a negative way. I actually very much enjoyed it. And the thing is, is what's really crazy about where monsters lie is that it's supposed to be a four issue um and it totally opens up for a continuation maybe a sequel which is kind of funny because you know it, it really does set it up kind of like a horror movie and the idea that it's when the end happens it's not necessarily the end and um yeah kind of kind of does that like a horror slasher movie the end is not ag- might not actually be the end everything might not be sunny in sunnyville you know and and sequel possibility maybe possibly do i have something on my nose no okay i'm good um that would have been embarrassing if i actually had something on my nose and y'all like saw it Ooh. Okay. <sighs> when I was a kid, I, was, I think it was like, like the fifth grade. And you know how they had school picture day? And I had my hair, I had my, you know, outfit on. I was ready to go. I was like fifth or fifth grade. I'm going to say fifth grade, fifth or sixth grade. And go to get my picture taken get my picture taken weeks later the the proofs come back right and the proofs are like small so like everything looks okay right but your parents can then order like picture packages and my parents ordered the picture package of course and part of the picture package involved like a big eight by ten right when you get the picture package back and you see the bigger pictures like the five by seven, the eight by 10, I have clearly a bat in the cave in the picture. Picture dude did me wrong. Like he should have been like, man, you guys, you know, you probably want to retake this kid has a bat in the cave, but no, it comes home with me. I clearly have a bat in the cave. And when you get the pictures, they send them, to the school and have the kids, you know, pick them up and bring them home. Right. So they get handed out in middle class and it is completely obvious to everyone in that classroom 
because it's a, like a picture window in the in the folder and right it's the eight by ten and it's shit in my nose booger bat in the cave in my nose clearly it was what everyone talked about for a week anyways <sighs> wonder woman 7.99 i'm jumping back into wonder woman um this is part one of uh whatever happens to the warrior of truth um and it is basically kind of an introduction it's a two-part series uh this is 7.99 800 is going to be a um basically kind of like a um if i'm understanding right it's gonna be kind of a a, a back and forth um, storyline where we are going to be introduced to Trinity, which is Wonder Woman's daughter. Basically, that's what she's being billed as. Um, we're going to see something from the past, stuff from the past, from the future, all that kind of stuff. Um, whatever happened to the Warrior of Truth? This is basically a bunch of different writers and artists. Um, uh, Clune and Conrad Martinez, Hetrick, uh, Fiera, uh, Terry Dodson. Um, Ganicho, Ganicho, Morales, um, uh, R. Dotson, and uh, Bon Villain. Um, so a lot of artists. This cover artist is Yannick Paquette and Nathan Fairbarn. Um, this is the one I picked. It's the cover A. Yeah. So um, basically, everybody um, that has a big closeness to uh diana is having weird dreams that are kind of like mirroring important moments or important like moments that are similar to important moments um between them and diana uh steve trevor's having a dream um siggy um from uh, valhalla he's having a dream um hmm. Oh, uh, Etta Candy is having a dream, um, and, uh, Nubia is having a dream. So, um, and the thing is, is what you find out is that, um, Diana has been on Themyscira, but like trying to kind of, um, recover from her last situation, which is basically, um, if you weren't reading it, it's the Lazarus planet, um, kind of like spinoff of uh fury of the gods or i i, I forget exactly what it was called it's something like that it involved her and shazam and the gods and that kind of thing so um yeah uh what you find out is that um she at this point when everyone's having these dreams about her will not wake up and that was the end of the issue so um, I, um, I viewed it as pretty good primer for, um, 800. Do I necessarily think you needed, uh, to read 799, uh, to get 800? Well, I don't know. I, I think that might be one of those things where they weren't, they weren't really, I think it's one of those wait and see moments where you're like, okay, so when you get 800, yes, you really did need to read seven ninety nine to get it, or no, you didn't. It's not one of those ones that I can predict very easily, based on what was actually going on there. Um, if you are very interested in eight hundred, um, and you pick up eight hundred, and some things aren't making complete sense to you, I would say that maybe leave yourself open to go and pick up uh, seven ninety nine that's all um just give i i would if you were planning on getting 800 but not getting 799 go ahead give 800 a shot but you might have to go back and get 799 or just you know what if you know me on on instagram ask me questions i'll let you know yeah my dms are open if you read wonder woman 800 and don't understand what the hell's going on I'll try to help. Um, next one that we're going to talk about is Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, number four. 
Um, this is a five issue series. This is number four. We are continuing on the story of Blade training his daughter Brielle um, to be a damn fear like him. Day Walker damn fear like him. Um, and a the end of the last issue, Deacon Frost appears to have taken uh, Brielle's mother and uh, Blade's uh, ex um, taking her hostage to try and draw them out. Well, what you end up finding out is that it is a clone of Deacon Frost and he is associated with the classmate of Brielle's that is a monster hunter a vampire hunter and has caused trouble for Brielle and continues to cause trouble for Brielle um, by egging Brielle on in the classroom in the hallway of school that um, she is one of the people responsible for her mother being missing for her mother being obviously kidnapped. Um, Blade does find um, Brielle's mother and they are right now at the end of that situation stuck um trying to figure out how to get out um the the mother is is breaking out and um brielle has asked her friends for help in the situation um rather than staying put like her father told her and i think the i think uh blade pretty much realizes at the end of that story that at the end of this issue that Brielle is not going to listen to him and just not get involved because he basically, when he's, he's kind of like tied down, he's like, he's restrained. Um, and he tells the mom as she's running out, like she, you know, starts, you know, hitting people and getting free. Um, he's like, go to where, um, Brielle and I have been training. So I think he knows that even though he told his daughter not to get involved, that she is actually going to be getting involved um, in the whole situation and sent the mom out to go find her. That's what I think is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, um, it's, you know, it, it it's one of those things where Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, continues to be a... Just a simple five issue story. We're on issue four about fatherhood and, um, you know, fatherhood when you're a vampire, when you're a damn fear, basically. And um, it's a coming of age story that we talk about all the time about when, you know, how do we get teenagers and, and get people that are younger um, interested in comics. And here you have, you have bloodline. You could give this to any girl, you know, teenage girl and, and see if she bites. Um, yeah, I mean, it is definitely, it is safe to show teenage girls. It's not like she's running around, you know, and, and, and doing things that are unlike a teenage girl. She's a teenage girl that happens to have, um, uh, happens to be a, a quarter vampire, uh, damn fear to be exact and um, is the daughter of blade so there you go okay so next we're going to talk about superman uh issue four um this is one of those ones that's been going on for a while with the dawn of dc obviously we've got issue four um no real issues um with uh uh williamson campbell dragada and martin's story here um cover um Get the cover A. That's all you need. Jamal Campbell's cover A's have been fantastic. Yeah. Um, he also continues to be showing us the uh, the Superman gun show. The Superman slash Clark Kent, Clark Kent gun show in every issue. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Um, like, damn. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so we're continuing this whole situation where um, Superman is cautiously working with Lex Luthor um, involving this threat from Lex's fast 
And he finally gets Lex Luthor to kind of tell him his his backstory. And Superman uh, is not necessarily buying it, but he's listening to it. Um, we'll have to see exactly how well that plays out because Lex de- definitely kind of um, paints himself as a hero. And let's be real, this is Lex Luthor. Um, there might be a little bit of truth, but a little bit of bullshit and all of that. So, <sighs> and of course, when he's telling the story, Lex Luthor has hair too. It's like this, this big bouffant, red bouffant hairstyle, like, like greaser, you know, like he's got a lot of hair. And when he's telling his, his backstory, He's got a lot of hair. Luke's Luther, Lex Luthor is like, okay, so like, um, if you are from the Chicago area or if you are just well-versed in uh, Chicago football, it's like those moments when um, you've known throughout the entire career of Bryant Urlacher that he was bald. Like, he was bald, right? Throughout his entire career. And he retires and then he becomes like, uh, um, when he retires, then he goes and he gets hair. Like he joined one of those like, like, like groups that he gets like treatment and he gets hair. Right. Okay. So it's like seeing a picture of Brian Urlacher when you knew him most, when he was one of the monsters of the midway, um, and versus these billboards that started popping up in the Chicago land talking about how I was, I'm Brian Urlacher and I once was bald and now I have hair again. And there's a picture of him with, you know, full head of hair. It's like that. It's, you know, it's, it's that jarring to see Lex Luthor without hair versus Lex Luthor with a big old, you know, red poof on his head. It's, 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 it's jarring as seeing, Brian Urlacher, well, all of his career, no freaking hair, um, you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, guys, I got hair now. <sighs> On a big old billboard. <laughs> Seriously, it was, uh, I don't know, uh, it's not there anymore, but it was like on 90, like going into Chicago from the suburbs, like for years. But um, we learn more about Lex Luthor's connection to all that. And we also learn a little something about Mr. Jimmy Olsen. Apparently, Mr. Jimmy Olsen is in a relationship with the Silver Banshee. Who is trying to turn over a new leaf, but gets um, blackmailed into working with the team that is against Lex Luthor. So there's that, there's that, there's that story we need to find out more about. Mm hmm. Jimmy, you like the bad girls, eh? All right, moving on. I liked it all, but I, it, Superman has been absolutely solid. All these four issues, I'm into it. I one th- one complaint, one complaint. I want to see, um, the, is it Mary Moonlight, Moonlight Mary? I want to see her come back in a big way, and I want to see it soon. I don't want to forget about her because she looked bloody cool, and I hope she comes back soon. Um, we're gonna be moving on. Uh, to we're gonna talk about Danny Catch Ghost Rider number one. Um. I very much like this. This is a number one. Um, I'm thinking it's a uh, it's a, a mini series. Now, for those of you that don't know, Danny Ketch is the Ghost Rider. Um, after, uh, oh God, what's his name? I'm like blanking now. This is when you see me drinking this. This is the first coffee of the day, guys. Sorry, um, Johnny Blaze. Uh, he's the, the, the next ghost writer after blaze. Um, and he is, he is dealing with everything going on. We have the, um, the broker, 
um, is obviously pulling uh, bad guys, giving them superpowers, and sending them off to do um, their work for them. Basically, they're minions, you know, minions. You know how that works, right? Creating minions out of the criminals from the street and Ghost Rider um, is doing Ghost Rider things. He, you know, goes after people that hurt people and when innocent blood is drawn, is drawn, then there's ghost, there's ghost rider. It's, it was very, you know, cut and dry. This is, we know what ghost rider does. Um, let's see here. Let me give you, they don't have the creative team right on the cover. I hate that by the way, put your goddamn creative team on the cover, put your goddamn creative team on the cover. All of them do it from time to time. It's not just Marvel. And sometimes Marvel has their creative team around the cover. Like, like, uh, Bloodline, Danny Lore, um, uh, Darbo and Peter on that one. Um, if I didn't mention it, but put your creative team on the cover. I don't care if it's a variant. I don't care if it's a variant. Put your creative team on the cover. All right. We've got Howard Mackey. Uh, Daniel Picciolo, um, Garu F EFX, um, VCs, Travis Lanham and the cover by Ben Harvey. Um, we've also got, um, uh, Frederico, um, Vincini, Edgar Delgado, Javier Salteres and Frank Delamato. Um, we've got different variant artists, um, Logan Labrua and uh, Rochelle, Rachel, uh, Rosenberg, Mark Texier. Um, and then we're getting into the editors and all that crap. So, um, you know what, since I've got the page open, let's, uh, Kat, uh, Gregorich, um, assistant editor, Darren Shaw, editor and CB Sabluski editor in chief. Since I had the page open, since Marvel forced me to go ahead and go in there and, and, and see the full team, not just the, the, the main creators. I went ahead and read them all. How about them apples? Okay. All companies do it. Sometimes they forget to put the names of their creators on the goddamn cover. I don't care if it's goddamn variant. The only time I care, the only time I think it's fine is when you're purposely purchasing a variant that's a virgin variant it's not supposed to have anything on it that's a difference that's an exception but this is just a regular variant cover put your goddamn names of your creators on it moving on let's talk about the first edition of donna dc titans number one um this is let's just go ahead and and, and do it right away uh, Taylor, Scott, and Kwok. Um, this cover is done by Nicola Scott and Annette Kwok. Good job. Woo! Love it. It's just your cover A, guys. Your cover A. Um, so what I thought we were going to be getting is not what we're getting. I thought we were going to be kind of spinning out of what is happening in Nightwing currently. But no, this is kind of a new start. Um... Which to me is, oh, it's all fine and dandy, guys. It's it's okay. It's okay. But here's the thing. You have, they've been taking up a lot of the, they've been taking up the entire pages of Nightwing telling Titans tales that you were thinking were probably just going to be continued here. Which means one of two things. Hopefully they're going to finish that stupid storyline. It's not stupid. It's not stupid. I'm, I, I am very much enjoying Nightwing, y'all. I very much read Nightwing. I very much enjoy it. I haven't hate read Nightwing at all in my entire life yet. 
I will, however, say, what the hell? Figure out the Heartless thing. Finish the storyline of Heartless, and then you can do... You, you the, the, the whole... The whole publication could be Dick Grayson's Nightwing because it's summer coming, you know. It could be Dick Grayson's Nightwing sitting by a pool in a Speedo and I wouldn't care. Probably still buy it too. Um, but they have used Nightwing as a what was seeming to be a a jumping off point for the the Titans book. However, it's not continuing the story that is going on in Nightwing. So hopefully that finishes soon. Please God, let that finish soon. And then we get to being Nightwing being a Nightwing book and not a Titans book. Whew. That being said, uh, Teen Titans, uh, or excuse me, Titans, they're not teens anymore, y'all. They're replacing the Justice League for the time being. And um, we have here, this is the book that I mentioned earlier today in this video. Um, that has the possible connection to that DC primer free issue. Um, we start out the issue with somebody has shot Wally West's flash in the back and he has no idea what happened. He's thinking, you know, I have dodged bullets before, but when somebody shoots me in the back and I can't see it coming, that's a problem. So, um, it starts out with Wally West talking about how he knows he's about ready to die. And what is he doing? He's going by his house. He's telling his kids and his wife that he loves them. Um, and then running back to the Titans tower. Um, so he gets back there and then you kind of cut to the Titans are, are showing up sometime late, sometime, you know, later, um, to the new tower in Bloodhaven. Um, so the, they get called off to go do something and they actually end up running into Peacemaker. They actually get called off to, um, deal with a King Kong like situation from Ti Titanic, uh, 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 King Kong type of. Like, okay, we gotta, we gotta get the monkey off the nuclear power plant situation. And they actually handle the whole situation. Um, what you would consider intelligently because it's a superhero book and King Kong really doesn't exist. And by the way, this is not King Kong. It's a different, huge, um, primate climbing the side of it nuclear flower plant and I mean Peacemaker wants to just shoot the thing and that would have caused a bigger problem involving the nuclear power plant um but the Teen Titans save the day I keep on calling them Teen Titans fuck it no Titans save the day and They arrive back to the tower and find Wally dead on the floor. See, this is something. We have all this, all this talk about Miss Marvel's dying. And that sucks. People that, that like Miss Marvel and Miss Marvel's dying, but one, death in comics means nothing. How many times has Batman died? Um... It doesn't mean anything anymore. Like, but the thing is, it's like you have all this rigmarole because they're, they're, they let it slip at Marvel that Miss Marvel was dying, was going to be killed. And yeah, we have actually in this book, the death of a character 
So what is it? Is it and and nobody and, and nobody really knew ahead of time that Wally West was going to be lying dead on the floor in the Titans Tower. However, it makes you think. Why and how did that leak happen? Why specifically did that leak happen about Ms. Marvel? Conspiracy theories, conspiracy theorists in the comic community. It's weird, huh? Yeah. Anyways, next thing we're going to talk about, and I have this absolutely, I, when I saw that this cover was coming out, I absolutely, absolutely had to have this cover for Catwoman number 55, Dan Piozan. Um, it's so cute. I love it. Y'all know I'm a sucker for the kitties. You know I'm a sucker for the kitty cats. Um, and this one is, um, okay, creative team. Uh, Howard, Leon, and Gandini. So, um, uh, Selena shows up at the meeting and, um, Iako does not, does not fight her. Um, they fight with each other. And so the, the, the cat's out of the bag per se, um, pun intended. I'm going to admit it when I intend a pun, I'm going to, I'm going to use it. I'm going to admit it when I intend a pun. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to own that shit. It's like if you, you're, you're in a room with a few people and you fart, own it, own that shit. Anyways. So Selena last issue broke out of jail. Um, she, uh, the cat's out of the bag. Now Eiko knows and is at least working with Catwoman. And lots of people not happy about it. Plus, we have an encounter between Dario, a.k.a. Tom Cat, and his former boyfriend, Noah, who is got designs on Dario's father's business. Becoming the head of that family, the Tomasco family. And has to eliminate anyone, thinks that he has to eliminate anyone that makes him look less of a uh, masculine figure. And that would be Dario. Because Dario, uh, they have this, uh, this viewpoint in the community that if you're gay, you're less masculine. Fuck that shit. Honestly. Um, so he needs to eliminate Dario. So they're going to have a, uh, duel at dawn kind of thing. Um, not really a, a duel at dawn, but a duel, um, where, um, they're going to fight each other to the death. And, um, so Dario is going to fight Noah to the death. Um, and now Catwoman is dealing with everything that happened, that's been happening, dealing with her own feelings involving everything that's been happening. And she is also going to help Dario uh, complete his training. He, she's just like, I'm going to get you ready. I'm going to get you ready. And I'm going to get you to the point where she's like using kind of like this, this whole thought process of, of that she's had involving killing Valmont, whom that she cared about um, and having no... Um, no uh um what's the word i'm looking for um cuz she she tells him that he he um what is it she tells him that you hold back that you hesitate and she's like look i'm going to teach you you can't hesitate because you cared about him you know and she's kind of like uh, internally Dealing with the fact that, that while she cared about Valmont, she loved Bruce more and she could not hesitate when she saw that Valmont was going to kill Batman. And I want them to develop that a little bit more. So I feel like there is something more there. Um, 
that I think Selena, Selena needs to find out. I feel like there's something more to that story. Um, because if you go back to that issue, Batman comes in. He's like, okay, I'm going to help you on your terms, Selena. Your terms. I'm going to help you because I trust you. And he walks in. When Batman walks in, he's like, oh, I know all about you to Valmont. Like, there's got to be something more there that because Valmont literally was this like Batman is literally holding up like a beam or a wall or something like that from crushing Selena and Valmont is like jumping through the air with knives to kill Batman. There's more there. And I hope that they revisit that and they give us a little bit of an answer with that one. Um, one of the things that, that came up in the story um, that is going to probably have some uh, some uh, stuff to deal with later is Selena, now that she's out of jail, does not want Eiko wearing the cat suit anymore. And Eiko is like, no, you, um, whatever, I do what I want. And is planning on wearing the cat suit still. Um, that might cause a problem later on, I think. We'll see. Um, I think that, that Catwoman is going to, there's one, we're going to need a little bit more, a little bit more information about Valmont. And what Batman knew about him. And we definitely have seen advertisements in, in especially in the Bat books, in, in the DC books, that have hinted at a crossover type situation coming. We'll have to see what happens. Um, because I hope... I hope there is something that could, a little bit of something that can be given to Selena to help her deal with what she did. And I think Batman has information that could be helpful in that situation. He needs to just, he needs to just supply it for Christ's sakes. Okay. Like for real. Anyways, guys, let's talk about a new number one at DC. Um, the visual. I'm liking this. Uh, Ram V, um, Lailit Kumar Sharma, and Rain Badero. Um, cover by Samit Kumar. Yeah. This was this is part of the We Are Legends um, idea at DC. This is a team. Um, and they just got a new liaison because the guy was retiring and is a team that kind of does like these covert, um, operations. Um, and, oh gosh, it's, it's, it's actually like really good. It's hard to describe because it's so good. Um, they got a little bit of an introduction, not only in, uh, not only in Lazarus Planet, but also in Detective Comics. Um, they got a little bit of uh, a secondary introduction in Detective Comics dealing with Barbara Gordon. Um, and yeah, lots of fun. I, 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 I really enjoyed this. I, I'm really kind of uh, um, looking to see how this progresses and maybe I'll have more to say about it next time um but like it's hard to be critical it's hard to be critical of it i'm going to tell you that i'm going to tell you right now it's because we don't know much about the team we don't know much about what's going on and the purpose of the story um uh yeah like it's a team of, of covert agents doing things, um, and they take out pirates in this, in this issue. It's really cool. It's really cool. Like I, I have to, I probably 
I think by the second issue, I'm probably going to be talking more about it than I am here. Um, but yeah, it's a good beginning, good beginning to, to, to this. Um, and oh, by the way, that started my top three. So, you know, I really liked it if it started my top three. Sorry, guys. I usually tell you guys when I start the top three. This time I did not. So that was the first one of my top three. My next one is going to be the beginning of the Brave and the Bold number one. Um, this is basically kind of like um, Batman Urban Legends, but under a different name, a new number one, but they're calling it uh, Batman, the Brave and the Bold. Um, it's an anthology of different stories. And... Um, Y'all, Tom Keen with another banner, okay? A banner. Um, I, I, what's really different about the, uh, comparing this, Batman Brave and the Bold, to Urban Legends 1, I think, like, I liked three out of the four sh stories, four or five of stories in, uh, the beginning of, uh, Urban Legends, um, but I liked each of these. There's like four stories and I liked every one of them. Um, let's go ahead and, and let's talk Dan Mora, black and white story written and art by Dan Mora. Uh, interesting elsewhere's uh, kind of tale for Batman that I believe is continuing in the next issue. Um, we have a Stormwatch uh, story. Very interesting. Um, we learned that Peacekeeper won. Hey! peacekeeper what's up you are in stormwatch um ravenger stormwatch um they've got um a new character they get basically ghostmaker's former um sidekick and i think that it's the the was the antagonist from the beginning um uh, few issues of the most recent Batman Incorporated. I didn't pick up Batman Incorporated until that arc was over. Um, but I think that's who's in here who just joined Stormwatch. But Superman story, um, interesting. Uh, did not show all of its hand right from the start, but showed enough of its hand that I was interested in what it had to say in it continuing. Um, it's the concept of... Uh, Clark Kent trying to help revive readership um, at the Daily Planet by co-writing co-writing a piece with Superman um, about a Superman journey um, and figuring out like some mystery because they got a Clark Kent got like a package in the mail and he's like okay I can figure this out so that was cute, but I want to pay special attention to the Tom King piece because Tom King, y'all, Tom King did it again. Um, one of the things I have not read the entire Tom King Batman run. One of the things I love about writers is when they give ever so special nods to the classics and tom king has done that tom king has done that a bit okay this is an example of one of them i have not seen anyone talking about this i don't think people want to spoil it but since this is a spoiler testic comic book review i'm gonna tell you all about it batman brave and the bold tom king's story harkens back all the way to batman number one and i'm not talking about rebirth one or new 52 one no i'm talking about batman number one 1940 beam bam boom harkens back all the way to that now he has done that once before he did that in the proposal issue of uh, the Batman run that he did, uh, the proposal issue 
where he makes a mention about the ring being made from the stone from the cat story in Batman number one. And he did it again. Now, I've read Batman number one a number of times for uh, various reasons. Batman number one is kind of an anthology story book, okay? So you have a, a few different stories. One of them happens to be the first appearance of the cat. Another one happens to be the first appearance of the Joker. And it involves... Now, if you've read Batman Brave and the Bold, you read Tom King's story, but you have not read all the way back Batman number one from 1940 you will start to understand and 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 the 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 puzzle pieces will fit in the story the first story in the book um and the first appearance of the joker um is the joker has threatened to kill a person and steal their diamond. The person's name is Claridge. Claridge. Which is the same person that Commissioner Gordon and the police are trying to protect in that first story, Tom King's story. And the reason the Joker is saying this new villain the joker batman year one kind of story is saying the reason why they're there is because he wants to kill the the guy and take his diamond and basically and then there's this whole side thing where you have batman uh, with somebody and then you also have the joker hanging out with a little girl that likes balloons and when the joker returns the little girl he waits until after to make sure that his whole plot um, goes off. So the guy is dead and they find that the diamond has been replaced by glass and it's not a real diamond. Um, so as soon as all that goes off without a hitch, uh, the Joker then returns the little girl and stabs her father. Um So in Batman number one, uh, the Joker's first appearance is he goes in and, and uh, the police are watching this guy and um, he ends up punishing or not punishing, uh, poisoning the guy and uh, getting his diamond anyways, but he just did it and they didn't, it was one of those things where like he had already completed the crime, um, but it was like he had already, it was too late. He had already completed the crime. And he just waited for it to, to happen, for it all go off without a hitch. And I loved this story. And I loved that I was like, oh my God, it made me think of like these connections and this really cool shit. And I want to see what happens in, in the next story to see how it progresses because this is a multi-part story and i'm excited but guys yeah let me go ahead and open this puppy up and give you uh because it's an anthology it does not have um the writers on the front so let's see here do we have uh i believe this cover yes it's a simone de mio cover um simone de mio is doing a bunch of the brave and the bold cover a's coming up so yeah Okay, so we have Batman the winning card. That is the Tom King, uh, Mitch Gerards. So you get like the same kind of art concept um, from that wonderful award nominated um, Batman One Bad Day, The Riddler. Uh, if you have never read Batman One Bad Day, The Riddler, get thee to a comic book shop immediately. Um, and the lettering on this one is Clayton Cowes, uh, Stormwatch, Down with the Kings, Part 1, um, Ed Brisson. Um, he is also, uh, the dude writing, uh, Batman Incorporated, uh, Jeff Spokes and Sada, uh, Jeff Spokes on the art and colors and Seda Telefonta on letters. 
uh, Superman Order of the Black Lamp Part 1. Christopher Cantwell um, is the writer. Javier Rodriguez, Art and Colors, and Sim Simon Boland Letters. Heroes of Tomorrow um, is that last uh, uh, story uh, written and art by Dan Mora and lettering by Tom Neapolitano. Um, and as I mentioned, the cover is Simone de Mio. Um, they've got other variant covers. Um, and of course, Batman is created by Bob King with Bill Figure and Superman created by Jerry Siegel and Joe, Joe Schulster by a special arrangement with the Jerry Siegel family. Yeah. And it's that thick square, um, cut, um, lovely on the back as well, uh, has a quote from the Tom King tale. Um, I also have a knife, but you can't have that yet. That is a line that the Joker says to the little girl. And then early on in their conversation and they're hanging out, he says, I also have a knife, but you can't have that yet. And it's the knife that he uses to kill her father, to stab her father. Presume kill. Presume kill. All right, so here is the moment y'all been waiting for. That was the second of my top three. The number one of my top three is The Seasons Have Teeth, number two, by Dan Waters, Sebastian Cabral, and Dan Jackson. Got the creators right on the fucking cover, right there from Boom Studios, number two. I was absolutely in love with number one. I had certain theories involving different things involving number one. And I'm going to tell you guys, my theories are looking like they hold more water with this issue. Um, my theory being that Cindy, Cindy is not dead. So if you want to check that out, check it out. Um, I also talked about it um, not only here, but I talked about it on the uh, Pop Cultural Philosophers Monthly Comic Review um, seasons have teeth. Number one, I asked the panel, do you guys think based on what was said in the book is Cindy alive or is Cindy dead? And I said, Cindy is alive and we don't know for sure yet, but uh, yeah. Um, there's a possibility the the possibility still exists that Cindy is actually alive and not dead. Um, but anyways, uh, the seasons have teeth. Um, we have moved on. This is going to be a four issue series. We have moved on to summer and, um, this is really great. You get more background on exactly what kind of experience our character has involving photography. And you get a little bit of flashback of him going to, um, Belfast in, uh, in Ireland, uh, Belfast is in Northern Ireland, excuse me. Um, and the photographing the um, Irish Republican army um, doing some of their suicide bombings that they did and um, taking pictures of that. Um, his wife, Cindy, not being happy with the, the process and, and all that. I don't know. Is, is it his wife or is Cindy just his girl? I'm going to assume Cindy's his wife. Um, but she doesn't like the, the process of him leaving and it being dangerous. She just downright does not like that. Um, but he's like, you know, I'm going to chase this story, you know, and that kind of thing. And that's exactly what he is doing now. He is chasing the story of the monster that is summer. And of course the monster that is summer is a big fiery, um, big fiery goddess, um, and causing forest fires. And uh, he, you find out that he's not the only one that's a photographer that is trying to get all this stuff. And so he's in a, uh, a plane or a helicopter with other famous photographers that are actually kind of jealous of him, it seems, because they've been trying to photograph spring and they could not get any photographs of spring. And they've been instructed that they can't go and seek out the season summer. Um, they're just supposed to take pictures 
of the refugees getting out of the area. Well, one of the famous photographers and our hero, our protagonist, um, don't listen to that. They jump the fence to go find Summer. And uh, that dude doesn't uh, get out alive. But our protagonist does. He gets a picture of that fiery goddess Summer. Um, and I, I made the comment uh, to, to my boyfriend, to Joe, earlier. Um, I, I made the comment to him. I was like, uh, doesn't it look like Summer is like this um, badass goddess, you know, pole dancing on a tree? And if you didn't think of that, you're now thinking of that. And if you read the book, you are now going back to look at Seasons Have Teeth 2 to see if it looks like that to you. You're welcome. Anyways, um, this is a really, all that aside, this is a really awesome story about regret and um, the seasons of uh, the seasons of your life having different meanings and 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 different uh, meanings to 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 everything and, and having different meanings within themselves and you know the seasons of your life. Um, you know, the, the, the fire, um, that you have when you're young and you're just like, I can go do everything. And you go somewhere like Belfast and one of the four, um, uh, one of the three other people that you've traveled with to Belfast gets killed by a car bomb. And it's that like you're young and, and, and you don't go outside and freak out because, of the car bomb, you go outside and you photograph it, you know, you just have this, you know, and when people are worried about you, you're just like, no, no, I got to do this, you know? And it's that idea that you are untouchable. You're young and you're untouchable and possibly arrogant. And, um, and you just, you, yeah. It's great. It's a great book. And I definitely recommend it to anyone. It's just issue two. It's a four issue series, not much of a commitment. Um, it is basically like uh, suspected, uh, and, uh, going through each of the seasons we had spring for the first one. This is summer. Um, it's a four issue. It's, uh, let's see here. Where's the price? Price is not on the front. I think it's three ninety nine. Hold on. I have my receipt right here. My long ass receipt. Okay, it's a four ninety nine book. Yeah, it's a four ninety nine book. So in all you're paying twenty bucks for a really great story. Um I can't wait to see what Autumn has in store for him. Um, but anyways, he gets the picture. He gets to, to, to publish the picture of Summer. And he's moving forward. He's like, I'm going to get them all. I'm going to, I'm going to picture, get a picture of all of them. I'm going to document all these seasons, which you kind of figured that was his intention from the start. And, and you know what? It's making for a great story. Um, but anyways, guys, that was the last comic I was going to talk about today. Um, so definitely let me know in the comments what you think of the books I've read. Maybe you think that I should be reading something. Let me know. And uh, yeah, yeah, let me know your recommendations. But anyways, guys, uh, if you want to support the channel um, down below in the description are different ways that you can if you are so inclined. Um, and... But the biggest way to support the channel is to like, subscribe, and share my videos because, well, I mean, if you like it, share it. Why not? Do it. Do it. But anyways, guys, uh, that's it for the spoiler test at comic review for the officially unofficial geek channel. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And, um, as always, if you see something, say something and remember the complacent never make a difference. And until next time I'll be seeing you guys. Bye-bye.